Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is my first time doing this, so if you could give me a little bit of slack. So I chose this scripture passage today because it's short and sweet and talks about love, which is perfect for our summer series as well. 25 years ago this week, I was scheduled to be born. The problem was my mom didn't feel any pain at the time. And so they waited for a couple of days and there was still no pain. So after two weeks, they finally decided, okay, maybe it's time for her to come out. They were worried that I was already being poisoned inside or you know, maybe I was just too comfortable in there. So they performed C-section and when I was born, I was diagnosed with triple heartbeat disease. As soon as I got out, the nurse rushed me to the incubator and my dad, who was waiting outside, just like in telenovelas, he ran after her thinking that I might be switched with another baby or that I might get stolen. A moment of birth, which is usually a moment of awe, became a sign of fear for my parents. In this story, in this act story, I feel like it is the same fear they experience, that we experience which hinders us from experiencing awe in life. In this story, I always wonder whenever I read it, where did the people, where did the disciples experience that awe? In the story, they said people found each other. People formed their own community because they believed in the same thing. And that's what brought them awe. And it was interesting because if I think about it, this story didn't, come long after people were demanding that Christ be crucified. There was fear in everyone who believed in him that they might get persecuted if they show that they believed in someone. And it's quite interesting to point out that we experience joy and completeness by being around people we feel connected to. Day by day, this was repeated twice in the story, day by day, we find someone, we find a place, maybe a book, that we feel understands us in a way that not a lot of, not a lot of people do. And that's what's make, what makes a community powerful. But that fear will always creep in. Two weeks ago, we always talk about day by day, so I'll, t I'll tell you a bit of a lot of stories about days of my life. Two weeks ago, my friends and I went on a road trip to Zion National Park. One of the must hikes was the Angels Landing Trail. I feel like the sense of like, I've been there. Where you have to hike up the canyons and then walk on narrow and steep cliff paths with 1,500 feet drop right beside you. And you only have bolted chains to support you throughout your trip. And sometimes there are parts of it where you don't have bolted chains at all. I mean, don't get me wrong, the views in Zion are amazing and they're incomparable. But if you are a scared of heights person like myself, our priorities are different during this hike. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it wasn't to see the view, like I, I, I can see it in pictures, but mine was to return alive hoping to tell this story. <laughs> Ironically, it was fear that made me experience awe during that hike. But it wasn't only from the views, but more from the sense of community during that hike where people knew the risks if you're selfish of having your own way or if you're selfish with not sharing the ropes. It's extreme that the consequence was death, but it was still fear that made each other reach out and offer their hand when you couldn't hold onto the ropes. It was a community built on the shared interest of finding and experiencing awe in nature and adventure. And that was the first time that I, was, that I actually felt like, oh my God, people are you know, reaching their hands. I, I wasn't able to take any videos because I was just too scared. Thank God for my roommate who had her GoPro on her all the time. 
But that moment where you feel awe in community, and these people are people that I don't know anything about. In this act story of the birth of the church, it's an account that did not focus on how many believed, how many believers were there, or how many possessions they shared. These were details that were, that were given to you before this account. This one in particular, in particular tells us how they reacted to the forming of a new community. It emphasizes the emotional responses to the communal sharing, how they treated each other. Remember that before this story was the Pentecost story where people from different backgrounds who, and spoke different mother tongues understood one another because of shared experiences and interests. They were different from one another, but they still found a community in each other. Much so, very coincidentally, is the summer of love 50 years ago, which is also our summer theme, which is perfect for this Sunday. I'm so proud of myself. Thousands of people came, came from different places and they converged in San Francisco because of their shared interest in hippie fashion and music. And much like in the story of Acts, day by day, the people who came to San Francisco grew in number and more people came to experience what it is to be in a community that understood their interests and their real selves. Day by day, they proved that love in different forms was powerful and that coming together significantly changed the United States cultural landscape since then. It is a spiritual and also a political movement, not only here in this country, but all throughout the world. The author of the book of Acts had the same thing. Luke might have exaggerated that from 120 believers, it became 3,000 very quickly. But then again, maybe the number does not really matter. You could say that we have 60 new members coming to our church today and not six. But I think it's more of emphasizing the point that it was day by day that they found each other and they grew together. It didn't say that overnight they became thousands in number. It was a gradual growth of understanding their companions and their own selves. But we all know this. Um, Reverend Day said this last week too, that even being in a community is a personal and emotional risk in itself. For me at least, that was very true and that's why it took me so long and a year to be a member of this church. I could say that I'm a peculiar kind of religious. I basically grew up in a Catholic school, and wa but I was baptized in the United Church of Christ in the Philippines. Recently, I was talking to Kit, I realized that I actually pray in a Catholic way and not in a Protestant way. I even carry a rosary with me everywhere I go. I kneel when I, when I feel like I need to be really connected to God. And I didn't realize that. Kit has a knack of asking simple questions that realize deeply important aspects of your being and that's what happened that day. And when I came here in the United States, I was always the person sitting at the very back and I was always the first one out of service. <laughs> but one morning after service, I had this thing that I had to go to the bathroom and that was the start of it. Lemerle, who you heard um, read the scripture today, she found me <laughs> while I was washing my hands. And she's like, you're new here, aren't you? I'm like, oh my God, this is it. <laughs> and she somehow introduced me to this community. And it's funny how sometimes we don't realize where we are actually at until someone makes us see it. I didn't want to be attached it was a huge emotional risk for me to do that. And when you, but when you find a place where you're surrounded by people who share the same values, 
who do not take everything so seriously. That's why I'm here in front of you. <laughs> and who do not isolate you because you're different. I felt no sense of regret and that risking part of myself to be part of this community or to be part of any community for that matter. And maybe again, I'm just always uh, some making my assumptions here. Maybe that's what Luke was trying to help us see in this story of Acts. That day by day, it didn't matter what language each one spoke. And that everything might be shifting and changing all the time. But it is what molds us in being a community. A big shift in my life started three years ago when I got accepted to do my master's in journalism here at Cal. And so I moved my whole life halfway across the world here in the United States. It was my first time here in the United States. I had no one. I didn't know where Berkeley was on the map. And I also didn't have any immediate family here, anywhere in this country. The difference, the difference was there was no death-defying fear. I was ready. I, was, I knew I had to come here. Fear only came recently when I was contemplating on leaving the U.S. for good. Fear because I already invested myself. Thinking that my emotional attachments here, my friends, my church, I didn't want to leave because I felt like this was second home to me. I honestly did not imagine, too, that I would find my community because I was always in the Philippines. I, I was comfortable. I was surrounded by people that I knew. And coming here, it was very new to me. And until today, I still don't believe it. My roommates and I could be considered the proudest and probably the most willing hosts in town. My friends who I met from graduate school, who are here today, and some of my friends who I met from through my other friends are significant to how I cope with life in the US because as we know it, it's, that not, it's not very easy. They keep my sanity intact. And just like in the act story, day by day, at least with my friends, we grow in number, and now we don't have enough party chairs in the house. They are my family away from home, and I'm glad to have them and my church meet a little bit today, and maybe we can say that we are all together in the shared interest of listening to me. <laughs> when Kit and I met a few days ago about my sermon preparation, she asked me again. I'm like, okay, she's asking me again. So she said, so I outlined to her, okay, this, these are the things that I wanted to say. And so she asked me, so where is God in this story? I'm like, oh, really, Kit? Okay, where is he? Let's see. Um, <laughs> to me, he is, he's the rope in Angel's Landing. He's the communion bread in the act story. It's not that obvious and maybe we don't recognize it, but maybe, or maybe we don't know it, know it at all. That whether we believe in God or not, to me, he's the one who is keeping us together. Who is letting us find connections to one another and to other people. Who makes us grow in number and grow in spirit day by day. In the story of birth of the church, we can see a maturing community of awe and fear, of shifts and changes, of a new way of life as a community. Maturity that is rooted in relationships and in our own communities of shared interests, love, and awe. Even when I was writing the sermon, finally, or at least when Google was trying to write it for me, I kept asking myself, where in the midst of the fear when I was born, where is awe in that? I mean, I can say that you're probably looking at an awesome person today, but that's <laughs> just between us. To me, I see something good in what happened to me on my birthday. The, 
that disease, a triple heartbeat disease, became a metaphor to me that early on in life, maybe I had so much love to give that my heart couldn't handle it. But in a serious note, there's so much love that the world needs. And we are being reminded of that in this story. There is so much love that the world needs. And we have that in us. We just have to share it. We just have to find those connections and find those communities where we can share that and multiply that. And in that communities that find us, sometimes we don't, we don't really find communities. Sometimes they find us. It is in the communities that find us or the communities you found and that we can call home. And that together we are growing in number and growing in spirit day by day. Amen.